Hi, I'm Josh Bassiches, Director and CEO of the Royal Ontario Museum. Welcome to this special online presentation of our signature lecture series, Rom Speaks. As we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional ancestral lands of the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation since time immemorial to today. From fascinating viewpoints to thought-provoking insights, Rom Speaks presents the brightest minds and most compelling voices on ideas that matter across art, culture, and nature. Please enjoy this essential new addition to our Rom at Home digital programming. And I look forward to welcoming you back to the museum for more programs like this when it is safe to do so. My name is Wes Terrell. I'm the president of the Association of Canadian Cartoonists and it is a remarkable position that I'm in right now. At the association, our mandate is to encourage participation with ink. People who get ink on their hands, they do magical things with it. It doesn't matter what the theme is. We're excited about people that draw, whether they're Canadian, whether they're American, whether they're international, whether they're drawing political cartoons or whether they're drawing comic books. You people here tonight are clearly enthusiasts of the latter, comic book fans. You're in for a real treat tonight, folks. Because if we had just one of these two gentlemen here tonight, you would go home with your money's worth. You'd say, my God, Rom, how did you do it? How did you make me so happy? But we're giving you two of the world's premier cartoonists for the price of one. <laughs> now, Created for a Cold War audience before many of us were born, Spider-Man was brought to us by Ditko and Lee at a crazy time, not dissimilar to the crazy times that we're living through right now. But it was clearly a revolutionary approach to comic book making. Right now, many, many years later, many artists later, we have gone into a situation where Spider-Man fans were asking for simply the most revolutionary people to draw Spider-Man and to bring it into your homes every day. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got them for you here. First, let me announce, we have a Canuck. You may not have known this. Some of you folks, you're all, you know, you're all patriots, you all love your Canadians, but did you know that we have a, pretty much Canada's premier man about town? He's a multitasking individual. He's a writer, he's an artist, he's a conceptualist, and perhaps at some point in the near future, he will be your future. Prime Minister, please welcome Mr. Chip Zdarsky, ladies and gentlemen. Now, now, you're thinking, wow, Wes, what, what more can you give us? Well, we've got a lot more because in addition to that, Chip's no fool. He partnered up with quite possibly one of the greatest men to ever walk the planet Earth. This, this gentleman, This gentleman, he's a charming and very, very warm individual. He's a draftsman with skill levels that really make just about any of us who draw, we, we, do, we, look, we look to the skies, we don't understand how he does it. But in addition to that, he is a thoughtful, guiding, and steadying hand to countless young students and professionals that one day dream of becoming a cartoonist and a comic book artist. Ladies and gentlemen, Will you please give a warm welcome to Mr. Adam Kubert. Now, I'm only going to say a couple more things and then we're going to pass it on to them, but I think everybody so far, you're, 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 you're saying this is a bit of a dream team that we've got here. And uh, if I can be so bold, maybe go a little bit farther than say, how could this do this team, if we put them forth, not win Dancing with the Stars? Am I right, ladies and gentlemen? West. So, I only wish my kids were here to, were here to hear this. Okay. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to throw it over to these, uh, these fine young men, and they're going to tell you a little bit about themselves. And when that's completed, we're going to sit down in the lounge and have an informal scenario, which uh, promises to be very, very exciting. Uh, first, can I ask this very important gentleman, Mr. Chip Zdarsky, to stand up and wave to the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, Chip Zdarsky. Uh, 
Okay, so I've been introduced twice now, and uh, I'm uh, supposed to introduce myself yet again. So uh, I'm going to do it real, real quickly. Um, so I started off at the National Post uh, when I got out of uh, illustration school. I was, the, um, I was the only guy at Sheridan College that read a newspaper. And my teacher noticed that and said, you should work for a newspaper. So I did. And I did it for 13 years. And uh, I started as a graphic artist, basically doing information graphics, maps, and, uh, and stock charts and stuff like that. And um, over the 13 years that I was there, my job changed uh, a little bit. Um, uh, to a role that is really hard to define. Um, I, I came up with the, the title, I was a, um, a graphic columnist uh, in which I would basically do dumb stunts for the newspaper and cartoon about it. Uh, this was me just before I rappelled down City Hall for, for charity. Um, and so yeah, so I, I worked at the National Post for, uh, like I said, 13 years. And uh, during that period, I started working on a comic book with a friend of mine named Matt Fraction. Uh, called Sex Criminals. Are there children here? Children? Raise your hands if you're a child. I'm so sorry. Um, it's not as bad as it sounds. Um, it's, a, it's a book that we did with Image Comics in which uh, it's about uh, relationships and, uh, and, and, and sex. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> and uh, mental health. So that's good. Uh, and uh, and it, it kind of overnight kind of created a new career for me. And so I had to uh, leave the paper, uh, as I like to say, jump from one dying print industry into another, and, uh, and, and, and work on this full time. And during that period, um, I started to work for Marvel Comics. Um, thanks to the Guardians of the Galaxy movie and a cameo by a certain duck, I was, uh, I was allowed to work on the Howard the Duck comic book, um, in which I was uh, a writer. So the first time uh, in my career, I was, uh, I was writing for another artist, which was a very strange thing to have the ideas in your head and have somebody do something completely different uh, and better, which made me quite angry. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize how angry I would be at artists. Not all of them. Some, some are fantastic. Uh, so I started a career at Marvel Comics. Uh, they ended up signing me up to, to write Star-Lord uh, with the artist Chris Anka. Um, I was super excited uh, until they told me that uh, during the series he was stranded on Earth. And so I did six issues of Star-Lord on Earth. Um, and yet it's not called Earth Lord, weird. Uh, and then uh, I had the chance to kind of reboot Jughead um, for, a, for a modern age, as you can tell by his torn jeans and his spray paint. Um, because uh, the best way to reboot uh, a teen character for a new generation of teens is to hire a 40-year-old man to do it. Um, <laughs> I believe it's been canceled. Um, and uh, with another local illustrator, Kagan McLeod, uh, we, we did a, uh, a sci-fi He-Man style epic called Captara for Image Comics. Um, uh, yeah, and, and, and again, this is for Image Comics, which is Sex Criminals, and it's kind of creator-owned, which is outside of the Marvel Comics machine. Um, but I love the Marvel Comics machine, so uh, I was hired to do Spectacular Spider-Man with uh, Adam Kubert, who is, uh, is just the greatest, as you've heard by all of the introductions. Um, and uh, I'll let Adam uh, talk about himself now, because uh, I'm sure he really wants to do that. Thank you. Well, I couldn't think of a worse thing to do than stand up here and talk about myself. <laughs> but, but that said, um, I've been drawing comics for a, a pretty long time. Uh, my first book came out in 1981. Prior to that, I actually started lettering for comics uh, when I was 11 years old. And that'll, that'll date me a little bit, but it goes, believe me, it goes way back. Um, I've been with Marvel since uh, like 1992, um, except for a three year stint that I did over at DC, I've, I've been there ever since. <laughs> and um, I, I come from uh, an artistic family. Uh, my dad uh, is known as the legend in the business from the you know silver and golden age of comics. Um, he also he was published very very early when he was 11 years old. He started uh, a school for cartooning back in 1976, which I I attended for three years, um, which is still going today. My my brother and I both run it. We teach there. We have about uh, 100 students that attend. Um, that, along with my monthly comic book grind, um, I'm, I'm kept pretty busy. 
Um, so I've drawn, you know, having been at Marvel for such a long period of time, I, I've drawn pretty much everything there. Uh, and I still love it to this day. Every day I wake up, I feel lucky as hell because I'm, I'm doing something I really love to do. Um, I don't know if they're scrolling through any of the, yeah. Some of the, some of the stuff I, I, I put up in the slides are um, some of my process uh, going from roughs, uh, thumbnails to roughs, because as a teacher, uh, the students really don't get to see the behind the scenes thought process that goes into making uh, comic books and, and what we do. And uh, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's really where the thought and the hard work is. The drawing is actually the easiest part. It's you know coming up with the ideas and the storytelling, and, and Chip will tell you. The writing, I think, is, is even harder than the drawing. You know, the actual sitting and, and drawing. Right, Chip? <laughs> um, circling up to Spider-Man, Chip and I worked you know, about uh, a dozen issues of uh, Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man, and that's, that's really a dream job. That's like the, you know, the, 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 the golden egg in, in comics. Is there such a thing, a golden egg? There is now. <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's a job that everybody wants, and it was, you know, I feel very fortunate that that was something that, um, you know, that they gave me. Um, so that's, uh, that's about it, and... Uh, <laughs> I'll give it back to Wes, right? All right, thank you for coming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Adam Kubert. All right, how do you feel back, uh, back in the lounge? I feel much better. It was a short walk, but it was, a, it was an important one. I know. <laughs> Is there somebody else here that would like to introduce us? Anyone, anyone, no? Please. All right. Now, I know a lot of you folks out there are uh, Spider-Man enthusiasts, so please don't be upset with us if we stay in the Spider-Man area for, for the night. If anybody screams out, I need to hear about an earlier title, we'll, we, we, we may consider it, though these gentlemen may consider it, but we, uh, we want to really just focus on this because it's a new project, uh, uh, comparatively new for, for you guys. Uh, how long uh, since uh, the production of the first uh, issue has it been? Um, I'm trying to think, I think it's been just over a year since, we, uh, since issue one came out. And I think it was probably about six months before that uh, when I was approached by Marvel to take on the title. Because there's a bit of a process before kind of you even start to script, especially when it comes to a character like Spider-Man because it's Marvel's flagship character, so they want to make sure everything is just perfect. Primo. But unfortunately, they hired me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> So yeah, like uh, I, I got the call um, offering me the gig, and I, I actually didn't take it right away because uh, uh, I thought I'd screw it up. And I was like, oh, should I do this? Like, I don't know, like. You should do it. Yeah, but it's, it's a weird kind of gig where everybody has their own relationship to Spider-Man depending on when they read the book. So you kind of know right away you're not gonna please everyone. So it's a mm -hmm. bit of a dangerous book to take over because some people be like, that's not like the 70s Spider-Man or it's not like the 90s Spider-Man. So I, I, was, I was reluctant to take it, but after I said yes, everything kind of moved fast. I went to New York and, and presented my ideas to the, uh, the editors and, uh, and they, were, they were approved. At least the first 15 issues were approved even before um, they approached Adam, I think, to draw it. And then as soon as Adam came on board, everything just went boom, boom, boom. Fantastic. Now, uh, is that a common scenario where you're, you're gonna get the call or do they give you that email that, ah, or is it always something of that nature will require a phone call? Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no smoke signals or anything like that, or yeah, like that yeah. hand delivered golden letter that says Spider Man on it. Um, <laughs> that would be good. But sometimes it's emails, yeah, phone calls yeah. usually. Um, and and uh, most times they ask you to pitch. Mm. So you kind of, you know, there's other people kind of pitching against you. Um, uh, usually in those cases, I say, I, I don't want to do it because I don't like that kind of pressure. And then they let you know, actually, you're the only person. But they just want to put that fear in you, which yeah, I get, but I'm just do. like, yeah, no. Is, is this unreasonable to ask this, but was this a title that either of you guys, when you were young, sitting in bed, looking up at that kaleidoscope of stickers that you put on your ceiling, had spidey things going, please, Lord, one day. Like, did, it, did, did either of you find yourself in that position? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, just, I, I, okay, my dad was a, a lifelong DC artist. So those are the books that I grew up on. I didn't even know, I mean, Spider-Man, of course, I knew existed. X-Men, I didn't know existed. So no, you know, I'm not, it's funny because I'm not so much a, a comic book fan other than an, a, a, an artist 
that loves the medium, mm -hmm. loves to tell stories with pictures. You know, I'll, I'll draw anything if there's a great story involved, whether it's Spider-Man, Batman, or sex criminal. Oh. <laughs> but that's you know that's the way it is for me so yeah, and I, I think like you kind of transition like even though I was a fan of comics when I was younger I didn't actually think that it could be a career uh, obviously you did because your your dad was making it a career um, but at some point when you become an adult and an artist you become more of a fan of the craft I think that's the thing like I, I started picking up comics again when I was an adult out of art school to study them because they you uh, you appreciate them on a totally different level sure. once you have like an art background. So how did uh, run us through it? Uh, you got that you went through your period of contemplation, yeah. and then at what point do you think Adam Kubert? He's my guy. Well, I mean, uh, as soon as they say Adam Kubert, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's great. I so mean, was he dangled as part of the the, the component uh, right off the bat? No, not not right away. Um, but, but when the email came in that uh, they were going to offer to Adam, I was like, yeah, of course. Like, and you probably want me to step down and you need a writer of a higher caliber. Um, yeah, it was super exciting. And it's, it's the weird thing, as Adam pointed out, he's been doing this a very, very, very long time. <laughs> and well, we didn't actually meet uh, during the process of creating the first issue, but we right. met at the signing in New York for issue one. And, uh, and he was obviously delightful in person. And we sat down to sign. And, you know, people bring up your previous work to be signed as well. And every time somebody would put down a comic in front of Adam, I was like, oh, my God, that's, that's the issue of X-Men where th this happened to Wolverine. I'm like, oh, you're Adam Kubert. Like, at that moment, like, I was like, oh, yeah, of course, he's Adam Kubert. He's a legend. But you don't realize that uh, how much so until you actually kind of see people bringing the comics that he's done over the years up. It's Pretty dramatic stuff. Did, yeah. Did you uh, have ec expectations or thoughts of, well, it's it's Adam. He's this this this, and then start working with him and go, oh, hold on a second. He's not that. He's, what he's completely different. Was there any shocks or surprises along the way? Mm, not really shocks or surprises because I knew his work super well as a fan. Um, the the fascinating thing was um, you could kind of step back and not. Um, put as much description, I think, in the script because you kind of know that Adam's going to do something much better than what you're going to write on the page. All right. So that was always like the, the kind of the surprise because um, the way comics work is like I'll, I'll write the script and the scripts are very much like a screenplay uh, and then they, they go on to Adam and, and he does the, the layouts and like w w what's your process when that happens, when you get the script? Well, when I get your script, I do thumbnails. I thumbnail out the whole story, then I rough out the whole story. I do it in stages and I, I try not to work on any one page for a long period of time. You know, because I like, uh, when I come back to a page, I could see the mistakes a lot quicker if, if I haven't worked on it in, in, yeah. a, in a short period of time. But I'd like to circle back and say that, you know, my job is made a lot easier when I'm working off a great story. And you have a great voice for Spider-Man and, in, you know, in particular, Peter Parker. Because working off uh, a bad story makes my job really difficult. You know, like we were talking yeah. before, Wes, I think, in, in my opinion, I think uh, the story is more important than the art. Because if the story is really good and the art is okay, I think people will still come back to read the next story, to see what happens to that character. I think they'll care about the character. But if the story isn't good, I don't think, and the, and the, and the art is fantastic, people won't really care about the character. Sure. You know? it's, 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 yeah, it's weird because as an artist, I'll pick it up for the art. Like, like maybe when I was younger, right, it would be right, like picking it up right. for the story. But now, like, if if the art is bad on a book and I love the story, like, I, I can't, I can't look at it. Right. Yeah. Well, as an artist, if the art is great, I'll pick it up because yeah. that's the part I I like to look at. But it's the story that will keep me and and hopefully you guys coming back for more to see what happens to these guys because our craft is such that, I mean, yeah, there's still pictures that we're drawing with word balloons above them. But I can see them, and hopefully, if we're doing our jobs right, you guys can see them too. Walk and talk and act, and are real, you know, real characters and yeah. real people. If if we're doing our job right. Yeah. Now I know with, with what we've discussed before, uh, clarity, clear the clear arc 
throughout things. And, and when you reach stumbling blocks at any point and you and, and Chip are doing your back and forth and, and notes are required, can you run the, uh, us through exactly what is required when you, you get to a point and say, I'm not sure where I should go with this artwork wise or what are notes like generally between I mean, you there guys? Are, there are only a couple of times where you'd have to text me for clarification. Um, I think there was one issue in particular that we did, which I think is probably the strongest one, was the, um, um, it's basically kind of like a diehard in a building where Peter Parker has to make his way through an apartment building um, and the cops can't find out he's Spider-Man during the process. Um, so to do that, like I sketched out the building before I wrote it, um, but right. because I kind of had that in my head, uh, there were a couple of times you want clarification on like where things were and, and mm -hmm. how he was going to make his way down. Well, it, it, it's, a, it's a bit unusual because Chip is a really good artist. So he has the ability to, you know, I, I guess when you write, you probably have to compartmentalize the writer half of you from the artistic half. Yeah. Because when you're writing, you're writing, you, you're not drawing. Yeah. So, you know, so that must be difficult. It's tricky. When the, the first Marvel book I did, Howard the Duck with Joe Canonis, it was... As I was writing it, I was picturing it in my head very clearly, like wh where the panels would be and, and what right. it would look like. And then uh, to get the artwork back from them, I was like, "Well, that's not what I would do." Oh, what? Oh, oh, what? What, what happens now? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it took a, it took a while to kind of get over that. And like the part of the realization was that it was much better than what uh, I, I would have done. And uh, like I said earlier, that made me hate myself. Mm -hmm. So there's no there's no winning really. Mm -hmm. yeah. After the first uh, issue was completed, did you guys, do you, like, do you generally feel like, okay, okay, we can do it, and now, like, even though you wouldn't necessarily say it in public, but you're going to maybe say it in public tonight, yeah. you know, thank God we got it. We, we got it in the can, and it's everything I'd hoped for. Uh, was it that sort of... It's never done. Like, that's the thing. Um, yeah. When I worked at the National Post, I, I, I love telling people this, uh, there was an editor there, the arts editor, and he once described being the editor of a newspaper section as being like, you're on an airplane that can never land and it's coal powered and you have to shovel coal into the engine all the time or it will crash. And I was like, wow, that's, that's dark. That's daunting. But, uh, but working in comics kind of feels that way as well because like those deadlines, like there's, there's no real break. Like you don't, you don't go, ah, now I take a week off. Like, nope. Never. Yeah. No. That's true. You don't, you don't have a chance to, to, to rest because it, it's really like one continuous story. You know, and when I was drawing that first issue of Spider-Man, I didn't really sweat about it because I'm not thinking, the, you know, every, I'm not thinking about everyone that this is reaching or how many issues, you know, how many people look at, at my work. I'm only thinking about what's in front of me, getting my work done for that day, hitting my deadline and moving on to the next thing. Um, not all the drawing that we do, or I imagine the writing is the same, is gonna be 10 out of 10. We want it to be you know, a 20 out of 10, but you do the best you can in the time that you have, and then you move on. You know, that's really the beauty of, of drawing comic books. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, I'm not doing one beautiful painting that people are gonna scrutinize every line or every brush stroke on. Um, you get in, you know, you're, the art really is there to service the story, sure. to move it from point A to point B, and so people enjoy, you know, enjoy reading it and, and following the characters. That's it. And you'll, you'll always be your own harshest critic, and you know so much about drawing that, like, a thing that you see on the page, like, ah, oh, that didn't really work that well, like, no one else is going to see that. That's true. Like, we were, I was saying last night, there's kind of, there's two famous uh, comic book artists from the 60s, 70s, John Romita and John Buscema. There's a story about them working together. Uh, John Romita did these really beautiful drawings, um, but he, he kept erasing and, and redrawing and erasing and redrawing, and John Buscema like, like grabbed his eraser from him and said, you're not paid to erase, you're paid to draw. Like right. every drawing you do is right. better than like anything anyone else does ever. So don't worry about it because you have to get the product out. Right. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you're looking at 18 uh, issues per year, is that correct? Well, we were looking at oh. 18. There's yeah. no way I can do 18. Holy <laughs> you know? when, it, right. when it's a popular character like Spider-Man, like generally you're supposed to do like an issue a month, so 12 yeah. in a year. Yeah. But when it's a popular character, they do what they call double shipping uh, every once in a while. So you put out 18 issues. I think 
it ended up being like more like 20 because there was an annual as well. Like, because Spider-Man makes money. People enjoy the character. I don't know if anyone's noticed right. that. He's uh, in a lot of movies and video yeah, games. Yeah. yeah. Now, can you guys, uh, I'll ask both of you, because there's, there's a writing component, but uh, in addition, Chip, as you probably all know, will write and draw occasionally when uh, Adam is doing other things. Uh, uh, first, I'll ask you, Chip, what, what, can you run us through, what's your day look like uh, on an average day? Spider-Man calls. I've got to get down, get my coffee, <laughs> get moving. Um, well, usually, uh, so the, the one gig that I consistently draw is, is the book Sex Criminals. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> and so my day is usually maybe around uh, 8 a.m. I'll start writing, usually kind of over coffee. Mm. And I'll write for a couple of hours. And then I'll switch over to drawing, and I'll draw for eight hours. And then um, usually kind of b before my wife gets home, I'll try and get some more writing done. Uh, and then, uh, and then the weekends is mostly writing. So it, it's, it's kind of a stupid way to live, and I, uh, <laughs> I fully acknowledge that. It might be a bit too much, but now, how stretched are you when you get something like you recently showed us the fabulous uh, artwork last night from uh, an issue that you had just drawn, and you, you take on all the mantle and carry the backpack yourself? Well, I'm again stupid. So uh, I, I, I want to maintain total control over a thing. And so on the final issue of Spider-Man, I, I did the art because Adam was already on to another project. Um, so I penciled, inked, lettered, colored it, and, and wrote mm -hmm. it. Uh, and that takes seven weeks. So from beginning to end, seven weeks. To do a script takes four days. So the, the amount of labor for the total art of a comic is, is far more than, than writing a script. But you're always working yeah. uh, as a writer. Like, I stopped listening to podcasts as soon as I became a writer because every walk I would take, I'd have to just be thinking about story all the time, yeah. which is unfortunate. So I don't know what's happening in a podcast. Uh, don't uh, spoil podcasts for me. Well, but that's, that's, <laughs> there, there's a, uh, a technique component there that I wanted to ask you guys about. It might seem frivolous, but I don't think so. It's... Uh, uh, you were listening to podcasts. Do you listen to music when you're uh, when you're drawing or writing? Yeah, so it's, it, it depends on what I'm doing. I can't listen to music with lyrics when I'm writing. Uh, I can listen to music with lyrics that I know very well when I'm drawing. Uh, when I'm coloring, I can listen to anything. I can listen to podcasts Agreed. or whatever I was coloring, yeah. um, because there's, there's certain levels of attention that need to be paid. And so, yeah, there's, there's different types of <laughs> music and, and, and audio for different stages. It, it, Do you listen to music when you're working? I, I listen to NPR all day long, but I don't hear it, <laughs> you know? It's just like background noise. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to, like, when I would thumbnail a page, that's, that's the most difficult for me, trying to figure out the storytelling. Um, and I used to have to have complete silence. But, um, you know, with all the noise that's going on <laughs> in the planet, you know, it's just background noise these days for me. Do you find it harder um, uh, as you go on in your career to thumbnail because you've kind of done every variation of a page layout? Like, there's only kind of so much you can do on a page. Like, do yeah. you, does it become more challenging? Or do you, are you just like, well, you know, I did this one back in, like, 2012, but it works. Well, you, you almost can't help but repeat yourself after you're doing, you know, I don't know how many pages I've done, but you start to repeat yourself. But, I, you know, I, I challenge myself. It's, it's really the story for me that dictates how I lay out a page, how, you know, the best way to tell the story. Um, so, um, you know, my editors say, uh, you know, don't try to reinvent the wheel, and I still try to reinvent the wheel with every story that I tell. Um, I just did, uh, after Soldier Supreme, uh, I did seven pages out of, um, a large story for Avengers number 700 for oh, Tom yeah, Brevoort, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was just a seven page sequence, you know, cause they broke up, it was such a big story, they have to get out in a quick uh, period of time. Um, they, they give it to different artists to do different scenes. So I did all seven pages, did I tell you? You showed me at the, <laughs> you know, at the yeah. I did them all, instead of reading the comic the, the normal way, I drew the pages so they read this way. But it was the story that dictated it, and without any spoilers, um, a couple of the sequences work better yeah. if you hold it this way, you know, to, to yeah. see them vertically to give like, it more Like Playboy impact. Centerfold style. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's fun for me to try different things. And after all this time, that's, that's where I, I get my enjoyment. Yeah. 
So now, like I was asking, uh, Chip, what is your? How does your day start? What uh, at what hour do you uh, arise? And well, it depends what I'm doing. I I still teach at the school two days a week, so uh, I'm I'm there. I leave at six in the morning to get there by seven. Um, I because you're a New Yorker now. I am a New Yorker. Yeah, I am a New Yorker. Um, but. Uh, I schedule my deadlines, the work that I have to do, uh, I schedule what I have to get done every day in order to meet my deadline at the end. So today I'm going to do five pages of roughs, tomorrow I'm going to do five thumbnails, the next day I'm going to do tight pencils, the next thing I'm going to do these two pages of inks. So I know exactly what I have to do and I don't schedule time on the weekends because the weekends I save for when I lose time okay. <laughs> during the week, <laughs> you know, but I don't schedule the weekends or family time or, or, or whatnot. Yeah. So that, cause, cause when I get a script, it scares me because I don't know, you know, I don't know the characters. I don't know the locations, you know, until I sit and do the reference until I'm comfortable with it. I'm, I'm nervous about it. Um, and until I schedule out my whole month, knowing what I have to do, what I have to do every day to meet that deadline, that's when I'm relaxed, and that's when I can sit and just get my work done. Now, so on a relaxed day, say you're you're, you're penciling or you're or you're doing inks, can you uh, illuminate us? I'd love it if both you guys could uh, tell us about your equipment and what it is you like to use. What techniques do you like to employ? Uh, well, I, I work more conventionally than a lot of other artists these days. Uh, I, you know, pencil and paper. Um, I will scan some of my work in and manipulate uh, some stuff in Photoshop, make panels bigger, smaller, uh, fix a, a drawing here or there. But it's mostly conventionally, pencil, paper, and ink. What, what do you like to draw with, for, with your inks? Uh, again, it's conventional. Um, if I'm in a hurry, I will use markers, but I don't prefer that. I just dip pens, bottle of ink, and, and uh, a brush, a watercolor brush. and. It's, uh, I, I like the tactile feel of, of putting pen to paper. Mm -hmm. I like the feel of the paper, I like the pencil, I like getting my hands a little bit dirty, um, and computers scare me, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Chip, uh, you, yourself with the technique? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite, uh, and I, I think I gravitate more towards computers because I'm not very good at drawing, and so there's so many mistakes, and like, it, when I do it traditionally, it's like 90% white out, or worse, I don't even bother correcting it, so it's just terrible. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of stages. Like, I'll do the, the roughs in uh, Photoshop really quickly. Um, it usually takes about a day to rough out a, a, an issue. Um, and then I use a, a, a program called Manga Studio, which is actually specifically designed for comic books. So you can like figure out the panels and perspective, things like that. Um, so you don't have to pull out actual physical rulers. So I'm doing this all on a, a Cintiq display tablet. Um, so I sometimes do physically put rulers on the screen and, and use mm -hmm. them for lines, but, uh, but the programs really help with that. So after I do all the black and white in Manga Studio, I export it into Photoshop. I do the coloring in Photoshop. And once that's uh, done, um, I, I do the lettering and like the background signs in Adobe Illustrator. And once that's done, uh, I lay it out in InDesign because okay. when you do books for Image Comics, you have to give them the final book. So I have to do all the design uh, for it. So InDesign is the final step and I send it off. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, Spider-Man, it's such an enormous title and, and both you guys have worked on, on very, very famous comic books before, but this has, there's only a few characters, you know, uh, Spider-Man or Batman or Superman, where there's expectations that are enormous uh, legacy-wise. Did, uh, uh, going back to when you first got the call and thought this is a bit stressful, uh, do you worry about uh, both what the, the public has to say about I, it, Chip Zdarsky, Spider-Man, or do you just, Try and put that right out of your head and go. I've got to please. Uh, I got to please myself first and just get down to business. I always got to please myself first. <laughs> <laughs> the. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so uh, here's here's the thing. So the day that I was announced on Spider-Man, you know, it's it's a big day in a young man's life. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it, it took up the whole day, like basically, you know, people congratulating you and like, you know, it's on social media and there's articles and that's fun. But I got maybe, I'm going to say a dozen messages from strangers via Tumblr, email, whatever, um, basically uh, telling me how to write Spider-Man. <laughs> of course. 
And they, they, they all start the same way, like, oh, I'm sure you will agree with me that the last 10 years of Spider-Man stories have been uh, very dire and horrible, and uh, that you'll agree that these characters need to come back, and then Spider-Man must be a good comic again. I'm like, oh, buddy. Oh. And so I just, like, that day, I just, like, shut that down, shut this down. Like, there was no way to contact me yeah, at that point, because I'm like, yeah, okay, I... Off. You can't listen because everyone's coming from a, a, like I said before, like from a weird, uh, it's usually a generational thing depending on when you imprint it on the character. Like there are people that are angry that a character was killed off in like 1972 to this day. <laughs> like legitimately, like you'll go to a convention, if it's a Spider-Man panel, like someone will stand up and they'll be shaking. They'll be shaking with rage <laughs> over the treatment of a, a character. And it's, uh, it's usually a lady and it's the, the lady character that th they loved and, and, and they... Can you blame them? Yeah, well, yeah, there's that. Um, and so, yeah, you, you can't please everyone, so I would try and write, especially a character like Spider-Man, towards, like, 10-year-olds, like, kind of when I was reading it. Um, but I always kind of think of, like, Pixar movies, like, the kind of thing where, like, a kid could watch it, but the adult can also enjoy it on another level. Like, you always have to kind of keep that in mind when sure. writing the superheroes, I think. Now, you, you've... You've been into this legacy scenario a, a handful of times, uh, taking on uh, things that are really n near and dear to people. Did you find that this was easier to handle, considering you've been through it before with uh, with big titles? You know, I, I if I really thought about what I was doing and and how it affected other people, I would never get my work done. Yeah, I I, I can't pay attention to you know if, if I ask ten people what they think about a particular page that I'm working on, I'll get 10 different opinions. And that'll just mix me up. Sure. <laughs> you know? So I don't pay attention to it. I just, I, I sit and do it and, and I hope they like it. You know, I wanna do it, you know, I, I respect the character. Um, I wanna do right by, you know, the legacy of that character. Um, you know, I'm aware of what's come before, but I wanna put my own stamp on what comes out. And I wanna do what I think looks best and is best for, the character. Right I can't second guess what other people want. What about at uh, the folks at HQ? Uh, did, 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 was there any expectations? Marvel they, HQ? Uh, yeah, the, the, the big, big <laughs> HQ. Where is Marvel yeah, HQ? Where he is? Mar <laughs> Can you tell us where the HQ well, actually is? Well, it's in New is? York. They're all my friends now, so, you know, um, you know, it, it, it's one of the same. I mean, I, they're the boss. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, they, they, uh, you know, they sign my checks, so if they say, you know, it, it's important to, you know, to go in a different direction, um, I'll say why, they'll say because, and, and I'll give them my opinion, and, but in the end, they're the boss. Sure. So, uh, you know, it's not my own, you know, it's not my own character, and, and you know, I, I respect that. Um, so, you know, if Marvel HQ wants me to change something, I'm gonna change it. Now, yeah, like, for, uh, with other Marvel books, um, especially the lower tier, like if you're going on Howard the Duck, uh, you can kind of do whatever you want, it's fine. There's not gonna be a lot of pushback, like, no, you can't have Howard the Duck do this. But once you work on a character like Spider-Man, there are a certain set of rules when you go into it. Like my first kind of meetings about the book were like, okay, this is what you can do, what you can't do, what we want you to do, um, things that should happen in each issue, things that kind of should kind of happen by page eight. Like there was, there was, it became a bit of a problem solving thing, each issue to kind of figure out how to, uh, to do what Marvel wanted for the book and also to do what I wanted to do for the book. Has anything ever been shut down that you were, oh, I know that's a good idea, why are they making me not well, use that? Uh, uh, a trick I picked up from my freelance illustration days was um, uh, when you're submitting roughs for an illustration, you do two that you know they're never gonna go for and then the one that you really want. And it, it works nine times out of 10. With that one time where they picked the terrible one, you're like, oh, no, no I was a fool. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of did that with the editor where I pitched him like three ideas and I knew he'd shoot down the two, and the third one was um, to have um, uh, J. Jonah Jameson find out who Spider-Man was. And, uh, and so he, he, he said yes tentatively to it, but he, he was smart enough to go convince me, and also, what's the way out of this? And I'm like, well, it's comic books. Like, I don't know, someone wipes his mind. Like, there's... <laughs> I don't want to be dismissive of the medium I work in, but like... He was like, how can we possibly undo this? I'm like, I don't know, like... <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Jay Jonah Jameson. Um, so that, there became a lot of discussion about that kind of plot point, um, and I had to convince him. Whereas before, on other characters, you don't really have to convince too much. Sure. Um, 
but yeah, but eventually they said yes, and it became kind of a thing that was echoed throughout the Marvel titles, which was kind of fun. Now, speaking of characters, you guys, uh, presumably, when you're drawing uh, such a, a vast array of characters or in the, the, the world of, of Spider-Man, um, can you tell us who would be your favorite? You must have two or three that you prefer to draw over others. Uh, you mean a Spider-Man character? Yeah. Well, I tell you, after seeing Chris Pacello's Sandman, I, I want to do Sandman. You know, right. I, I've done little bits and pieces of him, but after seeing that, you know, that one cover that you that you yeah. showed me that I hadn't seen before with Spider-Man sitting on a giant head of Sandman Glorious. with a, a, a beach umbrella, and yeah. that was just so. You say crazy. you want to draw Sandman, but like I know it was like a horrible experience for him because he had to draw sand. Like there was so much <laughs> sand. Like how do you draw sand? Like. Yeah. Pop, 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 I get paid pop, by like, gra by the grain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a grass is always greener thing. You're yeah. like, oh, I wanted to do that issue, but <laughs> trust me, you did not want to do that issue. Yeah. Is there a favorite uh, of yours that you you know if you were going to draw, like who would you? Say um, before I draw? drew, because I, I only drew the one issue of Spider Man, and before I drew that, I would say Spider Man. But about halfway through, like figuring out those goddamn webs was driving me insane because there's a there's a pattern to it i wanted to make sure it was like correct i'm like oh but like it changes once it comes down here because the mask goes like this and then it becomes a single line like why why um everybody uh, draws it different too uh, it was oh Do you my feel god like you, you'll be judged by the the web committee out there the, the, at some point <laughs> probably yeah and then like i I, you know, I when I started drawing it, I sent away to Amazon for a Spider-Man mask, thinking like, oh, I'll just like look at myself in a mirror in a Spider-Man mask like a crazy person all day. <laughs> <laughs> the mask shows up and it's got like these giant nose holes and nothing makes sense. I'm like, oh, what a waste of ten dollars. <laughs> and then I tried to look up like I don't. I'm uh, one of the comic guys that I don't collect toys or models or things like that. And so I was like, oh, you know, the Spider-Man Homecoming figure, like that looks really good. And like the webs are really nice on it. I'm gonna order it so I can like figure out how they go. It's like three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna spend that. That's my entire Marvel paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I bought like a kind of a crappy Spider-Man figure and like oh, oh. forget it. I'll just like figure it out on my own. So I was like, I was cursing Steve Ditko for coming up with the, the webs on sure. Spider-Man. And then like in the middle of me drawing the issue, Steve Ditko passed away and I felt like I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, you're a monster. Uh, now, uh, these are the, you, the people that you liked. Is there anybody in the Spider-Man universe that you just go, man, that guy again? Like you like curse Chip at any point? Like, I don't want to draw that guy again. Come on. Is there anybody that should be retired? No, and this is just between us. It's not, what not was the worst thing that made room. you draw? What was like the worst thing? The thing where you're like, oh, really? During our during our run, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It was all gold, right? They're all cool. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, the fun thing about Marvel is the the characters are so over the top. Some of them are like super campy, but trying to make them cool and and interesting is a is a challenge. Yeah. And I I like the challenge of that. So I you know. I don't know. Maybe maybe the feathers on the vulture were a pain in the butt to do. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, know. and then you really want to draw Sandman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that, pal. <laughs> Good luck with that. What we were saying last night, like one of the the things I realized, especially since I draw as well, like when I when I started writing for others, the immense guilt, because like I could just type the words. Spider-Man swings downtown New York. Traffic is crazy. <laughs> Hundreds of people are out. It took me like five seconds. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to take you all day <laughs> no, to draw we, that. We, we, we also yeah. talked about last night <laughs> that one word that you use, you know, to describe a, a panel. And this is, this is you know, the, the first word that, that I hate seeing in my script is parade. You know, that, that, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's horrible. The second word is renaissance painting. <laughs> and, and, and Chip, you described the panel. This is like a renaissance painting. I'm like, oh, my God, you know. You know, just knock up one of those Renaissance paintings. You can do that, right? Send email. <laughs> Piece of cake. Says yeah. the writer. Now, uh, we, we, uh, characters. If you were a character in the Spider-Man world, oh. who would you be? I think Hulk would beat Spider-Man. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, if I were a character in the Spider-Man book, who would I yeah, want to be? You, you're going to wake up tomorrow and go, okay, oh. I, Adam, i got to wake know. up as this and that guy. Like, and just between us, no one's going to know outside this room. Uh, I don't know. Life Uncle, is miserable. Uncle Ben. He dies immediately. 
uncle. Wow. Then, I could, a, then I could go back to work. That's a dark insight. <laughs> Well, Chip, you're used to putting on costumes. What, 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 what can well, we I, expect from you in the future? I, I mean, uh, <laughs> are you saying like what character I want to be? If you could wake up tomorrow and you go, well, they're I all be that like, guy. you know, there's a they, lot to choose from. They all go through such terrible things. I don't want to be any of them. Um, I guess J. Jonah Jameson, because then I could get pictures of Spider-Man instead of drawing pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Boom. Thinking. Would you be the cigar chomping old school uh, J. Jonah Jameson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we we can't have cigars in Marvel comics anymore. Is that actually? A, That's like actually a, a rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at some point they realize like, what are we doing putting cigars and cigars in comics for children? Oh no, it's probably not a good kidding. idea. No, no, no. So no. we replace it with cocaine. <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson just like oh, more pictures, more pictures, more pictures. He can't, he can't help himself. That's the thing. Instead of that weird little Hitler mustache he always has, it's just like white. <laughs> just a white strip of powder. Children still here? All right. See, good. You oh, came God. here for the inside scoops, folks. Wow. I'd like to ask Wes who he'd want to be. Yeah. Oh, well, um, I, who wouldn't want to have an extra set of really crazy metal arms flying yeah. around? Wouldn't Doc Ock that's be the, mo like the most fun? You could, cool. when you you make a good one. When that's you, a good I, artist I, answer. I, yeah. yeah. It's like just <laughs> flying and just... It would be fantastic. Okay, uh, I, I presume a lot of you folks have been following the the, the, the issues uh, over the past year, uh, and this may be a sensitive question, but is there one issue, and you can both answer this, that you feel like that's the one where I'm, I, I'm the happiest, I nailed it, everything came across, it worked perfectly. Uh, honestly, the Renaissance painting issue. <laughs> <laughs> because like, uh, and I was saying to Adam last night, like, you know, I, I did feel really bad typing that. But, uh, but what he did was a Renaissance painting. And that's, that's the thing a lot of people don't r realize with comic books is, uh, is uh, the, 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 even with, with all the speed of, of the process, like the artwork that's created is, is so vivid and, uh, and, and amazing, like on, on every page, uh, especially Adam's work. And, and the fact that he was able to kind of like create a feeling of a Renaissance painting in like a day is, uh, you're better than a Renaissance artist. I'm just going to say it. Well, agreed. <laughs> I, I, you know, I joke about the Renaissance, you know, the Renaissance description, but that really was the perfect description because with that one word, I knew exactly what you were looking for yeah. in that particular panel. It was Spider-Man. He was breaking out uh, from a, uh, out of a building, and all these armed guards were were after him, and they were tackling him and and you know, trying to stop him. And there was just you know, a gazillion guards with a trail, you know, Spider-Man with a gazillion guards behind him, around him. And it was, you know, that was a perfect description to, uh, you know, to, to aid me to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah, it was like a parade of guards, really. <laughs> <laughs> that word parade again. Yeah. yeah, that word parade. Now, is there an, an issue you would say out of the, 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 the bunch that you've done with Chip so far that you felt really nailed it? I would, well, I don't know that I nailed it, but, but the biggest challenge was the very first issue. Yeah. Because, you're, you know, it, it really takes two or three issues before you're comfortable with, with the characters. Even though we all know Spider-Man, we all know Peter Parker, you know, Johnny Storm, uh, the Human Torch was in it, but it, it takes a while to, to, to get comfortable. Um, but that first one, you know, it, it, it's always a challenge, but it's always a lot of fun to, to, to figure out what your take on the character is, how you're going to draw it. Um, you know, Spider-Man is generally a light and bright character, so I'm not going to do a lot of uh, uh, shadows and, mm -hmm. and blacks, and, you know, I'm going to keep it... Uh, mostly for color you know, okay. to keep it yeah. lighter. Now, does a lot of that come down to your comfort with the uh, colorists that you guys have worked with in, in the past? You know, like, they're going to see it this way and, and you, just, you feel really comfortable right off the bat? Sometimes you're comfortable with the colorists, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you have to compensate, you know, uh, if, you know, you want a perfect job with, with every book that comes out. It's not, you know, you don't always do perfect. The color, you know, it, it's all, you know, it's all, um, you know, it, it, it depends on what day of the week it is. I mean, we're all, you know, we're all creatives, we're all human. So, sure. 
Yeah, sure. the, the, the speed of the production as well. Like that's right. At the at the end of the production cycles, when the colorists and the letterers come in, and a lot of times they have like a few days to kind of like do the they job. Have to get like it done quickly. I remember I was on like a I was in New York. I was on a, a Spider Man panel, and they were showing pages from an upcoming issue, and that's when I found out we had a new colorist. Like I saw the color pages on the wall. I'm like oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> like because it it happens so fast. Like sometimes you're not even in the loop of who's right. going to be finishing finishing the job really. And any point in your career have you been with a colorist where it, for whatever reason, it just didn't work, and then, uh, but, and you're like, what do I do now? What's going uh, on? Again, I'm a control freak, so no one else has ever colored me. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I had the luxury, like, if I was doing a Marvel book month in and month out, I, I wouldn't be able to color it, but because on, on sex criminals, like, it's our own thing, so it's okay mm -hmm. if we put out a book every two months. Um, I'm, I'm afforded the opportunity to color my work. But on Marvel stuff, like I, I don't know how many colors have you worked uh, with in your career? A lot, yeah, a lot. Yeah. But you know, it, it's all a, it's a collaboration. You know, um, a lot of times the you know the the art duties on a comic book, you know, there's the penciler, the anchor, the colorist, the letterer. You know, it's a lot of a lot of creative minds come together to form one product. Sometimes they mix well, sometimes they don't. But when they do mix well. Um, you know, it, it's amazing stuff. I hand my, my work over to a colorist, and and similar uh, in in idea to you know when Chip writes a book and he gets back, you know, something different that he had imagined, but you know, uh, better hopefully yeah. than than what you imagined. A lot of times I'll get work back from a colorist, and it's like, oh my God, this is amazing. You know, it's now everybody thing. now, all the colorists are, are working uh, with the, the, the current system, with all the all the Adobe and what have you, right, all, all the right. all it's the all programs. Uh, when you were younger, were you uh, working in the pre-digital world? I mean, you were mm. uh, you've been around long enough that things were a little bit different. How did coloring are you work? Saying I'm an old guy. <laughs> He's a, a wonderfully <laughs> aged person. Okay, wonderfully aged. Uh, uh, That's politically what correct. What was it like working uh, with color uh, once upon a time? Like how, how, how different well, was it? Well, way, you know, back when I started, um, you, you, you could make your work color proof. You could, you could render the, the artwork. So, you know, all you had to do was put down one shade of a color and you could see a roundness in the form. These days, the colorist has at their disposal, they can change a black line to a color. They can uh, um, blur something out so it looks like it's in the background. Sure. And they could put textures, you know, on top of textures and, and really muck it up if they want to. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate. The guys that, I, that I've worked with uh, are artists un unto themselves. You know, it's not just a matter of color coloring within the lines. They know form, they understand drawing. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it, it has completely changed, you know, the digital medium is, you know, of coloring has completely changed how you can, you know, sure. how to draw. There's, there's a thing too, because of the high output with comics, is the fact that almost everyone working in comics, um, they're not precious. Like, like, if the color comes in and you have uh, problems with things throughout, uh, and you let the colorist know, they'll change it. Like there's, there's almost never a, a, a fight between the different levels of a comic right. um, because people just want the product to be the best it can be, uh, which helps. And because it's digital, you can, you can actually do it relatively quickly, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Have you found yourself uh, in the, uh, I guess, the, the lucky position of any of your students from uh, the school getting into a collaborative process with you through the years? Have you ever had any of them work their way up? I, I have worked with uh, some of the students that have graduated, but you know, the school's been going for 41 years. Wow! So there's you know, so there's a smattering of cube, we call them cubies through the whole industry. Um, uh, you know, editors and and whatnot. You know, the head of production at DC was a guy I went to school with, and so yeah, there there's there's a lot of collaborations. That's fantastic. Yeah, and you, you must be inspired uh, daily seeing the, the, the talent that it comes is. through the school. It, it is. It, it's, it's a great place to be. If you folks haven't had the, the opportunity to go see uh, uh, Adam's family's uh, website because there's nice galleries where you can see all kinds of stuff and the, the, art, the, the level is, is, is really remarkable. I mm -hmm. wish we had a, a comparable facility uh, here in Canada, but uh, as of yet, uh, we haven't figured that out, but mm -hmm. uh, maybe the Zdarsky Institute is in the... I, uh, last night when I was drifting off to sleep, I actually th thought about the idea of opening up like the Cubert North <laughs> in Toronto. Because Toronto's like a huge comic book uh, kind of uh, mecca, and, 
and yeah, they don't, like the illustration schools never really got into comic stuff. Like when I went to Sheridan College, like it actually said, like in your portfolio requirements, it said no comic book stuff, no fantasy, no comic book stuff. It was very clear. And so many of us just like kind of pushed that down <laughs> during the three, four years we were there. And then uh, when we all got out, we started doing comics again. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's room up here for a Cupert school. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> and maybe a headmaster. Is that what you call it? Headmaster? Uh, yeah. That's me. <laughs> The Z Academy. I like this yeah. idea. Or, or we just call it simply Z. Yeah. Just a yeah. giant letter Z right on the, on cool. the wall. Um, okay, I, I want to put you guys on the hot seat because I, I, it may be a bit risque, but we're, we're, we're a tight group here. Uh, the Spidey hot seat, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh -oh. This is, uh, with, with absolute all due respect, uh, just a little smattering of a list here. Uh, and it's not who's better, uh, who's worse, or anything along those lines. I but just I don't like it. I but just, like just, it. just I, like I just want to ask some preference uh, uh, questions to these guys and w what their their vote would be. Because every, on a taste uh, level, if I was going to ask each and every one of you out there, you'd all say, no, 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 no. I've got my guy or I've got my girl, and these are the people I, I, I get off on. They're the artists I love the most. So I'm going to ask you guys if you can say. I'll give you just two names. If you can say who is your cup of tea, and I'm going to throw out uh, Ross, Andrew, or Sarah Pacelli. <laughs> who do you, wh well, who work, I, works for you? I, I've worked with Ross Andrew. He wrote, or, or he was the editor on the first book that I drew, which was Warlord. And it was a terrible experience. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, it was a terrible <laughs> experience. He, he edited, he edited the script heavily with a thick black flare marker, and I'll never forget it. And I was too scared to say, I, I couldn't read half of what he said. You know, and I was too scared. I can't, you know, so I just, you know, I just winged it. But Sarah Pacelli is a hugely, hugely talented mm, great artist. Drawer. Um, so are you looking? Just who's like out of the two of them? Who's your, like you, you're going to have Pacelli, your preference? Sarah Pacelli, I okay. Basically, who lives and who dies? That's, that's <laughs> the question. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and would you, would well, because you really Sarah Pacelli is currently working at Marvel, I'm going to say her. You're going to go for Sarah. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah. Good response. Okay, I'll throw this over to you then. Eric Larson or Gil Kane? Well, Gil Kane. I mean, God bless mm -hmm. Eric Larson, but uh, Gil Kane's like, he's the Spider-Man guy. Eric Larson, you said? Yeah. You know... I, I like them both. It's hard, you know? Yeah. This is the <laughs> Spidey hot seat, <laughs> though. Wow. <laughs> I'll say Gil Kane. Okay, yeah. you're going for the Out Gil Kane. Out of respect Kane. to Gil Kane. Okay, and uh, back over to you, uh, Adam. John Romita or Alex Ross? <laughs> um, Alex Ross, because he is the modern master as far as comic painting goes. Mm -hmm. John Romita, I, I think... Uh, I can say that because I think Alex Ross would also say John Romita. I think there's no such thing as a bad John Romita drawing. Like, mm -hmm. it's kind of freaky. And also, uh, John Romita was like one of the, he was the first comic artist I ever met. I met him at the Silver Snail here when Spider-Man got married in the comics, like 88, 89. And uh, I, I stood in line for three hours uh, with my drawings because I knew he was art director of Marvel Comics and clearly this 10 year old is gonna work at Marvel Comics. And I presented my drawings of my own characters very professionally. They were eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper that I stapled to comic book backing boards. <laughs> and I went up to him and I got him to sign my comics. And then I just kind of like put my artwork down in front of him. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I just like just stared at him and he was just holding on to it. He's like, what do you, you want me to like sign them? <laughs> and I said, yes, please. So I still have it. It just says, John Romita, very good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your uh, Gordy Howe, Wayne Gretzky photo uh, with him, like future Marvel star? I ran right out of there. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. That, was, that was probably, uh, like, okay, the Spidey hot seat's almost over here, folks. This is a good one. This is, we're throwing this back to you, uh, Adam. Todd McFarlane or Steve Ditko? Keep in mind, um, one of them I, is a no longer man. alive. Again, I like... <laughs> so his work should be very Sadarsky. subpar. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I love Todd's work. Has, there's a lot of energy to his work. And you said, what, Steve Ditko? You know, I'm not a big fan of Steve Ditko. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, say, 
I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Chip. Just You're going to be okay. No. I like Todd's work. There's a lot of energy there. I like the detail. Uh, for people that don't know, like Steve Ditko did the first, was it 38 issues of Spider-Man? And basically every character that shows up in movies or any iteration That's of Spider-Man cool. is yeah. based on his work. Like he designed all those classic characters and villains, like for pure kind of creativity, like he's the guy. That being said, um, uh, after he left Marvel, he kind of lost his mind a yeah. little bit. Like, uh, he was an objectivist, and he kind of holed up in a studio and would create these, like, crazy comics about, like, the black and white moral situation of the world. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was pretty, pretty out there stuff. So mm -hmm. I would work with Steve Ditko circa 1963, but probably not 1999. You might not get along. Yeah, Maybe not, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I have, like, so many of my friends have stories about, like, tracking down his studio and, like, just getting to talk to him for a little bit, but as soon as you upset him, the door would the slam. The door slams. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that, yeah, that's unfortunate, but I, I virtually every, uh, every young man that I knew uh, in my neighborhood of Toronto growing up were all uh, Ditko slaves, and to this day, I think they're, 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 they're waiting for Adam uh, when you, uh, you go over to the bar oh, later sure, on, so yeah. I'd, I'd, be a little bit, uh, uh, I'd be a little bit careful about that. Um, <laughs> now, uh, um, Spider-Man hot seat. It is the Spider-Man hot seat, but I think you guys have a, 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 a acquitted yourselves well. We're going to get out of the hot seat now. We don't have that much time left, but I, I have to, the, the Spider-Man uh, media, the world of Spider-Man is so enormous, is you, you couldn't I've lived in the last two decades and not enjoyed uh, Spider-Man movies, and now you guys are working on them. Is there a Spider-Man film that uh, that stands out uh, uh, more than any other for you guys well, that I, you enjoyed? For me, I think it's, it's the most recent one. Um, I, I enjoyed the most, but I, I, I want to circle back to the Spider-Man video game, yeah. um, which is totally amazing, and it's very cinematic. Um, when I uh, first started drawing Spi you know, our Spider-Man book, that's what I looked to for reference on how Spider-Man should, uh, should move through the air, and it's just amazing stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen the, was a PS4 game, yeah. right? It's, it's just great, and, and I see that as being cinematic, so. I scored 100% completion on the game, so it's, n it's no big deal. <laughs> Thank you, yes, you're right. That does deserve applause. <laughs> From the Zed Academy. Uh, I, was, I was saying to my wife, like, uh, I was having a day where I was like, I was working on a, a kind of another Spider-Man project, and I was like, I was, I had to read 120 issues of Spider-Man to do this particular issue. So I had to read all these issues of Spider-Man in the morning, and during the day I had to kind of like plot out like some Spider-Man stuff, and in the evening I had to sit down and play this Spider-Man video game. It was like, this is either the greatest life or the saddest life. I can't tell. <laughs> Now, uh, any of the films stand out for you that uh, uh, the the most recent one? Yeah. Like they, I think they finally kind of nailed the uh, the the teen aspect of Spidey, which is still the kind of, even though he was only a teenager in the comics for like three years, like it's still the thing that the, the uh, other media kind of defaults to, because it's kind of the most rich in terms of like supporting cast and what he goes through as a character. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's like it was like a John Hughes film with like some great comedy bits and uh and and he was so good as spider-man um like there were scenes where he, you actually believed he was a kid like when he's trapped under the rubble and he's crying it's like oh my god like as a kid you kind of wanted to like break through the screen and help this this youngster this youngster this little spider-man character um yeah so that's that's kind of my favorite version yeah, as as marvel guys do you feel uh like it's your responsibility to see everything that gets put out there on the big screen uh or do you do you go i've, I've had enough i gotta just i gotta stay clean, cleanse my mind from time to time and stay away from superhero films i mean if we follow if we followed everything that's out there we wouldn't be getting our work done yeah you know there's just there's just too much out there there's there's a lot of inspiration um, I mean, all I have to do is type in Spider-Man on, you know, on Google, and you know, there's a ton of inspiration right there. Um, I enjoy the movies, but you know, and all the comics, but you can't keep up with all the product that's out, that's no. out there. Do you get stymied from time to time when you meet uh, lovely folks, such as the the folks out here tonight, and they have these encyclopedic uh, knowledge of, yeah. of the character? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, you know, or do you I'm just not, point to Chip? I just <laughs> point. <laughs> He's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, if ever I need a question answered, I ask my students because they know more than I do. 
yeah. or of the characters. And now, with, with your students, I'd like to, to segue in. To just, uh, there may be some students out here this evening that are uh, very, very uh, happy to be in the company of you guys. Is there any little nuggets of wisdom that you can throw out? Just say, let's pretend everyone in the front row here is a student at the, at the Kubert uh, Academy. What, uh, what little <laughs> nugget can you throw out that's gonna, people can go home with tonight? I can't really give the say the nugget because it's not. You know, well, because he charges, he charges for that information. <laughs> he has an <laughs> entire school. What I say to all the students, you know, yeah. you know, it, it, it's a business. You know, you, you have to be professional. You have to, you know, email people back and meet your deadlines and get your work done. And, you know, but in, in short, is you know, it, it's don't be a dick. That's what I say to them. You know, be be forthright. Yeah. That's very much. Do you find yourself in the same conundrum from time to time? People ask me, like, Chip, what do I do? I'm a bit of a dick, so I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so much advice you can give uh, people getting into comics. Like, being professional is, is definitely key, actually having a schedule. Um, and doing your own thing. Like, I, whenever I do, like, a Reddit AMA or whatever, or a panel, like, almost always, like, most of the questions are, like, how do I become a writer of Marvel Comics? And I have great ideas for Spider-Man. I'm like, well, that's good. But first of all, don't take my job, you monster. <laughs> um, I got I to gotta afford all these Spider-Man figures. Um, but you have to be able to write, write stories for yourself. And you have to kind of create your own characters as well. Like, if you can't do that, then you can't really do it on the level of Marvel or DC. You know, I, I tell people, especially artists, is like... Um, if you can do a full issue of something on your own, that's amazing. If you can do two issues, you're a comic book creator. Like, that's the big thing. A lot of people can, like, can push through and do like, one issue on their own, but to be able to do two, that actually shows that you have some sort of momentum and sure. that you could actually do this. And editors will see that and be like, oh, okay, you can actually do the job. Like, you get so many people that come up to you at conventions, and, and you probably get this all, much more than I do, showing you their portfolios, and you're flipping through, and it's like an action shot of Spider-Man, or an action shot of Batman, or maybe Batman and Spider-Man. Like, but there's almost no, like, sequential pages of cars and people and fashion, and being a comic artist is probably the hardest art job. Like before I got into comics, I, I did a bit of everything, like kind of background animations, uh, architectural stuff, uh, oil painting portraits, like whatever I could to kind of make a living. But to be a comic book artist, you have to be uh, uh, knowledgeable in anatomy, in fashion, uh, cars, building like architecture. You have to be able to design things, create things out of whole cloth. And you have to be a cinematographer because you have to be able to tell the story. Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many levels to it that um, it's always uh, frustrating to see somebody just putting in the work on one aspect of it, which is usually just muscle guys punching each other when you have to be able to draw like a, 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 a parent pushing a child in a stroller down the street. Like, ask them to do that and be like, what? Like, uh, does a baby have muscles? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you do have to be a, f a filmmaker, and, I, and it goes yeah. back to your, your storytelling uh, thing. Now, did you, did Dad uh, uh, push that into your head as a as a youngster about the story, uh, uh, the filmmaking, the cinematic uh, qualities of, of drawing? Well, that, that's one reason a lot of comic artists will make excellent directors because they are, in essence, uh, uh, a filmmaker. I mean, we're the set designer, we're the actors, because you know we start with a blank piece of paper, we have a story, but you know what's down on the paper is really you know, us and what we're feeling. I mean, a lot of times I'll catch myself if I'm drawing like, I don't know, Wolverine, you know, hacking and slashing, I'll catch myself gritting my teeth as I'm drawing. Um, so you, do, you have to know a lot about a lot of different things. It has to be contemporary. You can't draw people as they looked 20 years ago because that's not the, how they look today. You know, everybody's walking around with a cell phone. That's a natural thing. You know, you put those people in the background or the foregrounds or, you know, you were great in, in Spider-Man. You know, those are key story ele elements with cell phones. You know, that's a, that's that's a part of everyday life. So you have to, you know, you have to stay contemporary with sure. with what's going on and and be aware. Well, it's, it's a the, contemporary sorry, world. Sorry, just the, the the face thing, like 
a lot of people don't really, you know, realize that. Like, I find, like, if I'm drawing a scene and it's a page where people are, like, sad or crying or whatever, yeah. like, by the time I'm done the day, I'm like, my face hurts. <laughs> like, your face actually starts to hurt because you're, like, you're making, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like sad faces or happy yeah. faces, like, kind of all day without yeah. even realizing it. It's weird. Well, all yeah. the Disney animators all used to complain about that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mirrors going, yeah. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? Uh, th 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 you thought the evening was fantastic, but it's going to get even better, and I'm going to tell you why. Because we're going to wrap up our lounge here, and the lounge is going to move over into this expanse where you're going to be able to uh, get a drink. You're going to be able to walk around and do exciting things, but you're also going to have the opportunity to come up and meet these two very, very fine gentlemen. And I'd really like it if you can join with me in thanking them for being here this evening. Chip and Adam, thank you very much.